well, hey, you must be here for the Global Science Show. Hi, my name is Clara and I am a particle physicist working on the ATLAS experiment at CERN. My job is to understand the building blocks of the universe and try and work out how our universe actually works. What I'd love to do is to show you our detector in person and when hopefully things can go back to a, a new version of normal, then maybe you can come visit us here at CERN. But until then, I'm going to show it to you in a different way. Let's go. Aha, we've made it. We're standing roughly 100 meters below the surface of the French Swiss border near the city of Geneva in Switzerland. Behind me, you can see the Atlas detector, one of four major experiments on the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Now the Large Hadron Collider is a 27 kilometer long circular particle accelerator which takes protons, or sometimes lead ions, and accelerates them to almost the speed of light, and then collides them in the centre of our detectors. We then use Einstein's very famous equation, E equals mc squared, to take this matter, these protons, and convert them into energy in this collision. We then use this energy to create new matter, different particles that we want to study. The same thing is actually already happening in our atmosphere every day with particles that come from out of space. But we couldn't build our detector up here. The Atlas detector is made up of different layers that have a specific job in measuring the different types of particles that pass through. And then, like a detective, we put together all of this information and work out which particle was created in our collision. And we count them up and we see if it matches our predictions. But why are we doing this? Well, to know that, we're gonna have to go even smaller. Are you ready? Here, we are in the world of the subatomic, and this is what we call the standard model of particle physics. This contains all of the elementary particles that we have discovered and studied so far. We call them elementary because they cannot be broken down into any smaller pieces that we know. On the outside, of this diagram, you can see the fermions. These are the particles of matter. They're the stuff. On the top, we have the quarks. Now the U, the up quark, and the D, the down quark, are inside of the protons and neutrons. The top quark is actually the heaviest particle that we know of. On the bottom, we have the leptons. We have the charged leptons and the neutral leptons. You might recognise the electron in that bunch. In the centre, we have the force particles, the bosons. We have the photon, which is the particle of light, and this propagates the electromagnetic force. We also have the gluon from the strong force, and this binds particles together, like the quarks inside the proton and neutron. We also have the W and the Z boson. These come from the weak force. The W boson, for example, is responsible for making stars shine and for the creation of elementary chemical elements in our universe. It's pretty important. And then in the centre, we have the Higgs boson, the most recently discovered particle. We've been looking for it 
for over 50 years. This particle comes from the Higgs field and it's what gives these elementary fundamental particles their mass. And so all of these particles make up our recipe book for building a universe. Or do they? We also have their equivalent antimatter particles. But, for example, we don't understand why there was more matter than antimatter at the beginning of our universe. We also have measured dark matter in our universe, but we don't know what it's made of. It's possible that it could be made from another kind of particle that we haven't yet discovered. If so, we hope that maybe we could make it or see hints of it with our particle colliders, like the Large Hadron Collider we have at CERN. And these are just some of the questions that we're still trying to answer in particle physics. So, I mean, really, I could talk about this all day, but I think it's about time to hand over to the next presenter. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey. And hopefully one day you will be able to come and visit us here at CERN. Until then, stay safe and stay curious. Now, does anyone know how to reverse the shrink ray? <laughs>